This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako, two monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes. Use my code CEO at checkout for $5 off your first boxes. It's CEO here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a professional animal crosser with over 10,000 hours played in the game. I'm also an animal crossing addict and obviously play the game an unhealthy amount. This video is really exciting because I'm going to show you cold hard proof that Nintendo has been hiding from us in plain sight that proves we will see a minigame DLC release in the near future. In my previous video about a potential minigame DLC, I mentioned how in Animal Crossing New Leaf, there's a special island Cap'n took you to in his boat where you could play various games alone or with friends. I also explained that Nintendo already has released Amiibo Festival, which is basically a standalone collection of Animal Crossing minigames instead of a DLC. But there is something huge I missed. It's something you and I have seen countless times when playing New Horizons. And honestly, I can't believe I didn't see its true purpose until now. But before I blow your mind, I would love to tell you about today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Both are premium Japanese snack subscription boxes, each offering two exciting experiences. Use my code CEO to receive $5 off your first Tokyo Treat and Sakurako order. I'm a firm believer that one of the best ways to learn about a new culture is through experiencing their foods. These boxes deliver the joy of Japanese snacking right to your door. The Tokyo Treat Box is the heaviest Japanese snack box out there and includes up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that you can only find in Japan for a limited time. These pop Japanese snacks include Sakura Pepsi, Sake Kit Kats, and more. If you prefer a more traditional Japanese experience, the Sakura Ko box comes with 20 authentic and traditional artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and one special piece of Japanese tableware in every box. Sakura Ko also partners with local Japanese snack makers to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. Both the Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko boxes have different themes each month, so you always have something new to look forward to. This month, the Tokyo Treat Box features snacks from the Shibuya area of Tokyo. Shibuya is a foodie's paradise, and with this month's box, you can experience it all from the comfort of your home. And you're in for a special treat with this month's Sakura Ko Box, celebrating the island and culture of Hokkaido. The European climate of this island is famous for fresh dairy sweets and produce. The Sakura Ko Box will guide you through the different textures and flavors of this region for you to get a taste of all the Hokkaido has to offer. And if you're afraid of not knowing what snacks come in each box, don't worry. Each box comes with a cultural booklet explaining every snack included. You can even see which snacks are included before your box even arrives by visiting the Tokyo Treat or Sakura Ko website. So here I have this month's Tokyo Treat box. Look at the snacks there are like what this is the heaviest japanese snack box you can get and i think you can see why we got cake cats we got chocolate we got matcha candy bar we got we got popcorn if you've never been to japan but you want to try the snacks like this is the way to go there's a huge assortment definitely some of my favorites are these pudding flavored kit kats now i love these like very hard to find kit kat flavors and oh my god all these are delicious look so good i've been obsessed with drinking matcha lattes and now i can have matcha but it's a cookie bar so good i'm so excited to try this one there's even this cookies and cream waffle oh my god two of my favorite things cookies and cream and waffles Woo! So good! And of course, I can't forget about these. These are puffed cheese snacks with gouda, mozzarella, cheddar, and cambray cheese. Very fancy, very fancy. These are also really good. And if you're adventurous and trying new soda flavors, you gotta check out this caramel popcorn soda that comes in the Tokyo Treat Box. It tastes just like caramel popcorn. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like this, and I've seen my fair share of crazy out there sodas, and this is the first for me. And here I have the Sakura Ko box. Oh my god, look at these goodies. These are more traditional Japanese snacks, but just as tasty. These bite-sized cakes are definitely my favorite. They're so sweet, so soft, so delectable. And I also love this sweet treat. It's called a dorayaki. They're filled with chocolate and one's filled with red bean. This is the chocolate one. I had the one filled with red bean and it was so good. If you like red bean, you'll definitely like this box. And each Sakara Co box comes with a monthly mystery snack. Now this is what I got. I'm gonna try it right now. It looks like some red bean in there, some matcha perhaps. So look at this, look how big this is. It looks like there's some red bean paste in there. Let's try this. Mmm, mmm, mmm. 
when you order your box, it does tell you everything that's in it. But having these special mystery snacks really makes it exciting and really makes you look forward to the boxes. And of course, I can't forget to mention this adorable piece of tableware called a Four Seasons Soup Bowl. This also comes in the Sakurako box and it's part of its more traditional theming. If you're interested in experiencing these amazing snacks and flavors from Japan, feel free to check out the links in the description and use code CEO for $5 off your first Tokyo Treat and Sakurako boxes. A special thanks to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video and now I'm going to blow your minds with this huge mini game hint. I'm going to come right out and say it. These eight chairs prove we are getting a mini game DLC for New Horizons, but in order to show you why, we have to go back in time, all the way back to famous Tordemir's Island in New Leaf. You would get to this island by taking a boat ride with Cap'n. New Leaf Online Multiplayer also accommodated up to four total people on the island, three visitors plus yourself. And if you were doing multiplayer, all four of you could hop into Cap'n's boat and ride over. Now the secret is not in the minigames themselves, but how you access the games once on the island. One person goes up to the counter and talks to Leilani, Cap'n's wife, and then chooses which minigame the whole group will play. Now here is the magic sauce. The game then says we'll set sail and start the game once all players are ready and sitting in the chairs. In this case, it's just two players, but if it was a full house and there were four players, each would need to be sitting in a chair to start the game, hence why there are exactly four chairs. And where do we see this exact same feature in New Horizons? If you guess the roost, then you're correct. When you visit with visitors, you're all able to get coffee together, but Brewster will not serve you until everyone is seated. There are exactly eight seats, one for each person if it's a full lobby, since you can have up to eight people at a time on an island. The last person to sit triggers the dialogue with Brewster, who then asks if the group is paying together or separately. Then the cute little sequence plays where everyone drinks their coffee together. So this is just one instance of an activity that requires everybody to sit, just like on Tordemir's Island. And where else do we see eight perfect seats just waiting to be sat on? In the airport. Until now, these airport seats were just for decoration. Yes, you can sit on them, but that's it. They don't trigger any dialogue or event. I did an experiment just to make sure the chairs didn't reveal any secrets when eight people sat in them, but nope, nothing. Just the cutest airport lobby you've ever seen. I even talked to Wilbur just to make sure he didn't have any special dialogue for this occasion. But just imagine when Nintendo adds a minigame DLC. All seven of your friends can fly into the airport, then sit on a chair. Then the host goes up to Wilbur, or even a new kiosk added by the DLC from which you can pick a minigame to play. Then once everyone is seated, you'll all get on a Nook Inc. private jet and fly to your own private minigame island. Just like how for the Happy Home Paradise DLC, where you fly to a new island to experience the new gameplay. So we have three instances, all in Animal Crossing games, that have enough chairs for the maximum amount of people that can visit an island. And in two of those instances, sitting in those chairs actually triggers an event. To me, it's pretty obvious that the eight airport chairs will serve a purpose in the near future. And once that minigame DLC comes out, I will be playing it non-stop on my live streams. I'm super excited for when this time comes, and I'm gonna need people to play with. So be sure to follow me over on Twitch, so when the big day comes, we can all celebrate and play the minigames together. All of my live streams are PG-13 and safe spaces. So when do you think we'll see this DLC from Nintendo? Let me hear your thoughts in the comments. A huge thank you to all of my YouTube members for your continued support for me and my channel. YouTube members get priority access when I host multiplayer events on my island during my live streams, which will include minigames when we get that DLC. Members also get access to my 24-7 Treasure Islands hosted in my Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.